Hey, greetings, performance reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're going to be doing a technical tutorial on a very rare Viking from the late 70s, early 80s. And these were basically relabeled Electroluxes. This is going to be two videos spliced together, so this is kind of a post-edit note. Um, because of some things that happened in shipping, I ended up having to do this repair more than once. So I'm going to put in some some of that uh, newer footage with the older footage. So just be aware of that if things look out of place. I'm going to use the better of the two footages. And if you really like what we're doing, hit that bell notification and definitely check us out on Patreon, where some of this content's already been posted for a while. A uh, friend of mine had mentioned I should get one of these for the collection, and it is such a cool machine. It's a Viking. Unfortunately, the baffoon who packed this didn't put any packing material, so it cracked back here and over here. Now, there's a new one of these on eBay right now, but I'm not so sure about that. The bags, ooh, has a bad smell to it. This needs to be taken apart and fully cleaned. Um, so yeah, this is a machine I have no experience with, but it's so cool. I couldn't resist. It was 30 bucks on eBay. Um, you know, plus an ungodly shipping amount. Oh man, that's rusted in there. You can just see certain things just need attention. And it's really a shame. The one thing I didn't notice on eBay is nobody had a bottom part of this. And this is the danger in buying machines on eBay. Um, yeah, as you can see, I probably should stop doing that. Poor wheel is absolutely trashed. This caster, so I... Man, all this looks like it comes apart easily. It's just way too cool. Um, made in Sweden. Viking sewing machine and appliances. That's interesting. It does not even on the bottom side have the Electrolux. Because it is an Electrolux. Uh, it's basically a European style Electrolux made for America. Because I'm a perfectionist and this one is glued together, I found another thing and we're gonna be putting this together. All that, excellent. Put that in its place. Now this goes together with this. Uh, and this little nipple here. Again, needs some preserve, preservative on it. And this one's not all rusty like my last one was. So now the bag indicator, the gasket goes here. Huh. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, I want to just saturate this little guy. With a little bit of that. All right. And then these screws are what I had to epoxy together on the last one right here. So let's do that same thing here. Ooh. Put some oil on them. Just try to ease them going in there. All right, we're gonna put this guy on this machine. And that requires taking the whole damn thing apart. So this is now my fourth time in this machine. God help us. Just that, holding that in. Just 
those two. Then the whole machine just kind of pops off. There's a, like a little metal piece right there. And bam, that's that. Now. Now in typical Electrolux fashion, you do have to work on it on its up end like this. on a, So it's not lying flat, it's hard to film. But the motor just pops in and out. I just wanted to explain that since I don't really have great footage of me doing that. As you can see, it's hard to film where the camera is and I, I just don't have room to film this without setting it on the floor. I'm not going to get down on my hands and knees to fix the machine. The part around this gasket and everything came out and this came from the East Coast. Like everything else on the East Coast, it's rusted. We see some Mila sound deadening stuff. Well, it's not made by Mila, but it looks very Mila-esque. Um, so gosh, we've got, man, look at that. That's tight. That's tighter than a turtle. Um, let's see if I can pull this grommet one way or the other. Man, all right, so that can be hand washed. I'm gonna have to clean that motor out somehow. It's so rusted, it really makes me sad. Uh, I think the main thing I'm probably gonna do here tonight, because this is gonna have to, this is gonna get hand washed. Um, I'm probably gonna blow this out and then we're gonna take some WD-40 to outside of this, try to stop some of the rust. So yeah, I'm gonna compress air some of this stuff and uh, turn the camera back on. Let's get to the business at hand, which is we're going to replace the door. That comes off. And now we got these guys coming up over here. off the switch. So we'll take the old door off, put the other door on. Actually, what we're gonna do now uh, is actually put the bag in first so the door sh stays shut. It probably seems kind of odd, but th th this will make things easier. All right, so we're gonna do that. All right, that's latched. All right. Now we can start wiring it up. All right. First one is going to be this guy. Which I'm wiring basically let's move my carpet here where the fuck did the wire go you have to thread every everything has its place with this well that's where my wire went He just goes in here. Excuse me, folks. All right. So what was done was I just threaded that all on the way it's supposed to go, wired it up. Uh, there's not much to this. Then this guy's gonna clip on there and then the wires go, you can see in that clip. All right, after an, a, a struggle, we'll call it a struggle. Um, I've got everything back to where it is. Basically what I had to do was like hold it, like put all the wire, both wires have to be pinched in for the wire holder to work and then you like flip it over. It's the best way I can describe what I had to do. I didn't want to have the camera running while I futzed around. You 
know, I should be putting all the screws back with oil on them. lubrication all right so that's as good as that's gonna get let's put the uh ass end back on super important you want to put him uh in this thing for it to work um anyway so this guy uh he goes and you see there's a short end and a long end. The long end goes towards the orange part here. And what you're doing when you're putting this back together is you have to put it in this hole right here. Just to aid in that, I'm gonna give it some grease. Very little. So as we put this together, everything's gonna kind of snap in place. see as I'm putting this together everything just kind of snaps nicely in place and test the cord rewind all right that's all excellent so now we're gonna put the two large screws in and again doing this on its end like this seems to be the easiest way to work on it um, it's been the ex little experience I have with this machine this is what I found. Also, the amount of tension that goes on these rear screws is a uh, kind of a surprising amount because they they're actually there's a spring inside this machine that that's actually holding the motor in place. So if you don't have suction, that would be the thing to look for. see we're just doing that uh, unfortunately mine got broken in shipping when it came to me all right Ooh. and you just want to check the tension all right that's good and if you have to you can reform the metal body around it Let's see if it works now. See the full back check indicator moves. Turn it off. And now when we open the bag up, it should, yep, reset the full bag indicator just for fun. That's what the full hat bag indicator does. For those who are wondering. So, very cool. Uh, also a note, they make the modern HEPA bags for this. I had to get these from Europe, but they are still available. And um, of course, Electrolux does make a paper bag for this still as well. So give this video a thumbs up. Uh, hope you found this was interesting, this little piece of uh, European American history. Uh, you know, all European vacuum for the American market and have yourself a wonderful day.